Thank you. So um, let me start my uh, presentation with two short poll questions for you. I think I have to stop my um, share screen in order uh, for you to be able to do it. So as I come from um, park service, I'm interested in how many of you actually are nature site managers. And um, yeah, the other question is about uh, how many of you uh, actually uh, did already work with cultural heritage or do work with cultural heritage on a regular basis? So, uh, okay, please type in your answers. <laughs> we have four now. Uh, yeah. So, okay. So actually, you're, uh, only one of you is a nature site manager. Okay, interesting. Uh, so uh, can you put, put on the, the next poll question, Leanne? What's happening? I must do it, or what? No, I'm having a hard, I'm trying to, um... Next poll. So just give me one second. Okay, so please, if you did already work with cultural heritage or yeah, you do work with cultural heritage on regular basis. Okay, so we have one yes, no. Mm. Still one missing, <laughs> one did not vote. <laughs> okay, so um, two of you already have some experience uh, or three of you have already some experience with working with cultural heritage. This is interesting. I wish uh, we will hear some of your experiences uh, during the uh, second part of our workshop. Uh, so until then, uh, I hope that I will sparkle an interest in you on this topic uh, with my presentation. So, okay, we can stop the polling, Leanne, or we just close it and I'll share my screen again. Good. Oh yeah, if you have any questions during my presentation, comments and things like this, uh, like you are used to do it now for three days already, uh, you can just write in the chat section and I will try to answer to one or a comment or question at the end of my presentation as we are trying to keep uh, as short as possible uh, these presentations in order to have enough time for our discussion part, okay? So, um, as I already mentioned, I work at Schotzen Caves Park Public Service Agency. We are managers of a very small regional park of 401 hectare that stretches just above the cave system, including three small villages with a buffer area of 45,000 hectares. Furthermore, we manage Schotzen Caves as UNESCO World Heritage Site and underground wetland Ramsar Site as well and a little less than 60,000 hectares, 60,000 hectares big UNESCO Karst and Reka River Basin Biosphere Reserve. The UNESCO Managed Biosphere Program, according which biosphere reserves are managed, stresses that human dimension in the environment is core for ecosystem preservation as well as its sustainable use. This program has proven to be a highly efficient tool for conservation of natural and cultural heritage, enabling steps towards sustainable development of our biosphere reserve. Since its proclamation, we gradually developed a system established by Vanya de Bevets, who is here with us today, that based on the networking concept, attempts to link the scientific and research sphere to the local community, while actively involving it in long-term management through education, awareness rising and participatory approaches. I want to share some of these approaches together with my findings and view of nurturing nature through culture as the Global Youth Biodiversity Network puts it with you today. So the sustainable goals for cultural heritage preservation for me are the simple inclusion of our ancestors' wisdom in the modern paradigm of sustainable living. By doing this, we could prevent the formation or decomposition of cultural heritage to soul aesthetics and ensure that it would live on. 
For this, the preservation of the cultural message that can be perceived with a holistic understanding of what was passed down to us is essential. Due to all kinds of limitations, our ancestors lived with and were very well conscious of natural limitations being the most important among them, living in the past had to be sustainable in its own right if they were to survive. I prefer thinking that cultural heritage is an equivalent yet special aspect of sustainable living. Special because it includes environmental, social and economic aspects of sustainable development, with the perspective of 100 years of living in a specific environment. Cultural heritage is preserved by our societies with a conscious or subconscious purpose. And I truly wish that its perceived purpose in present times would not be only aesthetical. When we develop activities for achieving the SDGs, cultural heritage is an ideal content through which local population can be easily engaged. Even if they do not know their cultural heritage in detail anymore, they identify themselves with it. When working with cultural heritage, we do not approach them with research and scientific discoveries that could feel distant and sometimes hard to understand. We serve them with practical bases that their ancestors already set in the past are closer to them and can usually follow them with great ease. This connects them even more with their land and collective identity. Indirectly, we let them know that sustainable development paradigm is nothing entirely new. Of course, the contemporary understanding of cultural heritage is full of prejudice as it is believed to be something outdated. But this is not the point. To adjust or include what was passed down to you to the sustainable modern way of living. To practice the lessons learned by your ancestral community on sustainable living in the local natural environment that are not in conflict with values promoted by the SDGs are the same or at least very similar. And doing it so that you do not remove, destroy, damage it or create kitsch out of it. This is the point. To practice the sustainable aspects of your culture and wisdom of your ancestors. As managers of the Cars Biosphere Reserve, we use cultural heritage to work with stakeholders towards the SDGs on various levels of our networking system and else. So we work with cultural heritage within our international network of schools that was formally established in 2003. Within this network, each school year since 2001, we mark the uh, in International Women's Day with educational project activities based on local cultural heritage in general. The pupils, um, in general, the pupils compare past and present values, local knowledge of the area, cultural practices and use of natural resources with the help of their grandparents. These projects strengthen intergenerational ties and increase awareness of interconnectedness among people in the community and with their land. We work with cultural heritage within our network of universities, which was established in 2014 with the aim of promoting cooperation between universities and the park. We work with cultural heritage within our committee for providers and producers, which is one of the five committees established in 2014, aimed specifically at involving local communities and their members in the participation process and work of the Biosphere Reserve. For this committee's sake, a park's brand was registered. The criteria to obtain it are prepared at three levels for basic, advanced and innovative standards and are meant to encourage stakeholders to promote sustainable development in line with environmental aspect, cultural heritage aspect and social aspect. Since 2007, the yearly Belaitanga Cave Festival and Park Day is organized together with the local population and stakeholders. The event is based on the festivity that was celebrated in the village of Matavun roughly since 1886 till 1946 and is building upon its philosophy as well. We worked with cultural heritage within our committee for entrepreneurs that started with the aim of fostering social inclusion by involving disabled people in our activities. We worked with cultural heritage within our committee for sustainable tourism with a project entitled Local Historical Dishes, whose aim was to present the diversity of traditional local cuisine 
encourage networking of local caterers, sustainable development, and contribute to the conservation of local agriculture and landscape. We work with cultural heritage within our committee for cultural heritage protection that specializes in popularization of local tangible cultural heritage as well as takes action when a valuable unit is being threatened by the so-called development, simple abandonment or neglect. When our committee members decided to clean the vegetation around ruins of a water mill prior an event dedicated to reminiscing about local water mills tradition, they contributed to the biodiversity maintenance of the riverbeds. When after taking part in the professional training on cultural landscape of our biosphere reserve, our volunteers prepared a pamphlet disseminated across the Biosphere Reserve's household, stressing the importance of maintaining cultural landscape feature. They called upon local inhabitants to preserve biodiversity of local historical cultural landscape as well. And we indirectly promote and contribute to maintenance of natural resources also within our everyday efforts towards maintaining cultural heritage in our core area as determined by the law. In fact, cultural heritage protection law can serve as a tool for nature protection and vice versa. I believe you know it. For example, just last year we were tutoring our local inhabitants on decorative plants around the houses, explaining that by the law it is allowed to use only historically present and not invasive non-autochthonous and autochthonous decorative plants. Decoration plants available in great variety and numbers on the market today are becoming a serious factor of cultural landscape pollution. By using cultural heritage as it was roughly described above, 13 SDGs are directly addressed, life on land being the one addressed the most. If we agree that zero hunger and zero poverty are indirectly addressed and add life below water that will be described later on, we can conclude that by using cultural heritage, our park service tackles 16 out of 17 SDGs, mostly within the MAP program. According to the topic of our workshop, I would like now to elaborate a little bit more on two examples addressing two issues, biodiversity loss and climate change. Experts have estimated that on cars, we have several thousand kilometers of dry stone walls built without any binding material using stones obtained locally in the process of clearing and preparing plots of land. Archaeologists presume that the oldest dry stone walls in the area are, in, of karst were from Neolithic. During Roman times mortar was introduced but dry stone walls in their original form were still built outside settlements. And this practice continued till the end of Second World War, when agriculture began to be abandoned as people found work elsewhere. This completely changed the appearance of karst landscape. Arab land was no longer maintained and began to be overgrown with vegetation. Dry stone walls were no longer needed. The current of knowledge on dry stone walling that was passed down from generation to generation for thousands of years almost stopped. A handful of practitioners still remained. At the turn of the 21st century, a phenomenon of reviving dry stone walling arose on cars, followed by a planned complex movement to pass on the knowledge to younger generations. Upon the 10th anniversary of implementing the Manal Biosphere Program on Cars Biosphere Reserve on my and Vanya's initiative, a consortium for cars dry stone walling was established in 2015 in the wider cross-border cast area between Slovenia and Italy. The founding members being scientific research and educational institutions, municipalities, other managing institutions, architecture studios, civil society groups, private institutions and individuals. The basic math philosophy behind the consortium is that we did and do need the whole car society for the preservation of cars dry stone wall structures. If we want to provide conditions for a long term knowledge transfer and agriculture is not anymore an option, we need to find a place for these cons constructions in modern society that is not only aesthetics. To achieve this, we decided that we needed an interdisciplinary approach. 
The UNESCO inscription of dry stone walling knowledge and techniques of which Slovenia is one of the eight state party nominees argues that dry stone constructions are inseparably linked with the sustainable organization of the rural space. If their initial purpose was the disposal of accumulated stone, the mix of different dry stone construction in karst landscape supported and improved farming production and animal husbandry, creating favorable soil and weather conditions. But the modern reasons for their conservation derive from cultural heritage protection and natural conservation legislation and related professions. Furthermore, and more and more experts claim that we need dry stone walling as modern, sustainable, ecological, carbon footprint and total energy low building technique that helps maintain a quality living environment. Moreover, practicing dry stone walling helps maintain a bond with ancestors, identity, community. It is a fact that the caring activities of our movement are workshops with kindergarten, school children and karst villages. Therefore, dry stone wall constructions and everything linked with this practice helps us address the SDGs. But as karst cultural landscape site managers, we repair them above all because of their high biodiversity function deriving from specific microclimatic conditions and from uh, providing shelter for several species of plants and animals, reptiles being especially important. As structures following a line, they also have a connecting role between living environments import important for biodiversity. Shouldn't nature and cultural heritage conservationists combine their knowledge and together with scientists, related professionals and representatives from the economic sector come up with holistic innovative solutions for the sake of preserving traditionally man-made and maintained habitats and biodiversity related to them? Man-made hollows with still rainwater on forest called Kali Two were widely recognized as an important man-maintained habitat and network of water bodies around the dry karst landscape in the beginning of the 21st century, when a similar movement to the karst dry stone wall in partnership started. Kali are part of our karst cultural heritage. Nobody really knows when people started building them. Similar structures can be found all around the world where, depending on the geological structure of the ground, surface water was scarce or non-existent at all. Together with dry stone walls, Kali are one of the archetype adaptations of man to nature. Kali were used in local agriculture, mainly for watering cattle. In many places, they would use water from cow for slack lime production, ice production and firefighting as well. They also served as meeting points for villagers to socialize and children to learn how to swim and ice skate. Until the uh, construction of watertight and hygienically irreproachable water tanks, Kali, with different degree of clean water, were used by households too. When agriculture was abandoned, it had a big influence on the abandonment of Kali as well. The first call for day maintenance came from nature conservationists. Biodiversity and ecosystem services lost aside, there is another man-provoked threat already happening due to which Kali could become relevant again, addressing the SDG stipulation on sustainable use of water. Following the Slovenian Environmental Agency's climate change assessment for the period till the end of the 21st century that takes into account three different greenhouse gas emission scenarios, the average air temperature, heat load, number of hot days, number and duration of heat waves, temperature of the surface soil layer, length of the growing season, precipitation, evapotranspiration and yearly groundwater supply in Slovenia will increase. Putting the Kali in the perspective of predicted future summer and autumn increased drought conditions on cars, it makes us reconsider their original use as plain rainwater retainers that can give extra help for solving the problem of water supply for men, agriculture and firefighting. Not surprisingly, cultural heritage that evolved as an adaptation of human life to nature resources, climate included, can be used again as an adaptation to climate change. Of course, in the case of Kali, 
well-maintained cultural heritage can even enhance karst water ecosystem services whose management can further enhance the contribution to adaptation and mitigation of climate change. But to what degree? As an additional sustainable source of water on karst in the warmer future, wells can be reused as well. They are another timeless traditional solution that can be found in the treasuries of local cultural heritage all around the globe since antiquity. The traditional dry stone karst well was filled with rainwater collected directly from gutters, supplying it from surrounding roofs and filtering it through a container filled with gravel and charcoal before entering the cistern. On karst, they came into use quite late and simultaneously to the first water distribution systems. But most homestead wells were built between the two world wars and after the second world war. During the last period, electric pumps or hydro force were installed on wells that were already built with concrete. The reason being that the first water distribution systems on cars built between the middle of 19th century and the first world war covered just limited areas using different water sources. It was only in 1980 that speleologists at last found an adequate underground water source able to supply enough water for the whole karst area. Until then, wells were an equivalent water source for a great majority of households on karst. Said that in 2011, 660 inhabitants in 30 border villages were still entirely relying on wells. It could be due to the late introduction of the karst aqueduct or the obstinate stingy traditional local culture, but middle-aged and older people on karst still use drinking water with great care and sustainably in daily life, with private wells being frequently still used for washing and watering or even a source of drinking water. And this could be our advantage in the future. Why do I say this? It is true that the predicted future increase of yearly groundwater supply concerns the supply of our karst aqueduct. But the fact is that on karst, we have the most expensive water in Slovenia, at least so they taught us. The reason being that the height difference, uh, the reason being the height difference of the aqueduct that goes from 16 to 750 meters above sea level. Furthermore, projects were prepared in 2011 to link the Karst aqueduct with the nearby aqueducts of Ilirska Bistrica and coastal region, the later not have enough water during tourist season. Besides the 7% increase in inhabitants from 2008 till 2019 in the Karst municipalities, tourism development is not to be taken lightly on Karst as well. The statistics shows that since 2013, the number of tourists and lodging grew on average by 10% per year. Of all the tourists visiting cars between June and September, aren't these already enough important reasons to start an active approach towards sustainable use of drinking water? Tourists should learn about the traditional sustainable use of drinking water. Hands-on experience could be a wonderful tourist attraction. And tourist providers should strive towards a sustainable use of water in their facilities, combining different traditional and modern technological solutions available. Furthermore, it is observed with public concern that the remaining professionalized agricultural cars, mostly wine growing, in contemporary changed climate conditions, tends to consume big amounts of drinking water for plant watering during dry season, which was not the case in the past. Even though the karst wine region, region is the smallest in Slovenia, one can not avoid the question whether this is indeed a sustainable use of the most precious drinking water. In 2010, Slovene hydrologists proposed treated wastewater from treatment plants alternative solution. From this idea, alongside the use of wells and Kali water, a solution could be developed for more sustainable water use in agriculture and cars. I strongly believe that the more we combine modern science, professions and cultural heritage, the stronger we are on our path to achieving the SDGs. Due to changes in local climate, 
and consequently in local nature as a system biodiversity included nature itself sometimes prevents the once local traditional way of living just think of alaska for example the traditional knowledge that that system built upon can very well no longer be applied to the changed circumstances in local nature, at least not without deeper understanding and careful upgrade. In Slovenia, except for devoted experts, enthusiasts and old people, we mostly lost or are quickly losing the traditional understanding of our wild and cultivated nature and traditional ways of maintaining its balance with our living practices. With this, we are often unable to clearly understand the essence of traditional ways of living needed to react, uh, respond, adapt to the current state of nature as our ancestors did in the past. Furthermore, our ancestors adapted to nature and polished their solutions through centuries, while we, on the other hand, are supposed to adapt in one generation time or sometimes even less, one decade. We need to study our cultural heritage in great depth and quickly if we want to use it to come up with sustainable ideas and hopefully solutions as well. Due to cultural heritage state of preservation in our country, it is obligatory for the additional studies to be carried out by heritage experts or at least under their supervision to ensure the recognition of the original cultural message of heritage elements considering the wider contemporary cultural context. Heritage experts should also be included in the scientific or professional heritage upgrade development processes to ensure that modern solutions encapsulate the historic perspective and provide clear arguments what was the idea behind the traditional solution taken as a starting point to, live, to develop an upgrade or innovation that does not banalize heritage elements themselves. Nevertheless, I believe that if heritage elements are used by modern science or professions to come up with ideas according to their original functions and related meanings, with modern solutions devised in this way, the sole nature of cultural heritage is preserved. This does not mean that we do not need to preserve the original traditional solutions as well, as they could be directly needed for achieving different SDGs, as it is the case with dry stone walling and uh, also with Kali. And yet, is this enough? If the climate in our area is warming up, Shouldn't we look at traditional solutions of regions that used to be warmer already in the past and try to upgrade our solutions with theirs? Do we have limestone regions worldwide in different climate zones? Shouldn't we share our knowledge and help each other with traditional solutions? Shouldn't we engage local population that are still true barriers of their own traditional knowledge from karst landscape around the globe and let them connect with the help of experts. Would this change our community identities? Would we lose our own cultural heritage and identity? Experts should be included meticulously recording the processes of adaptation and adoption. They should ensure a documented line between what is an adoption, uh, adopted foreign nation's traditional solution or its upgrade and what is an original local traditional element. However, experts would decide to approach this idea. I have no doubt that a treasury of global traditional knowledge and ways of living in karst landscape and in general can help human civilization, its modern science and professions to fight the uncertain times to come with its distinctive holistic approach. A dream of modern science, professions, and cultural heritage synthesis. Thank you. Okay, <laughs> good. Uh, Lian, uh, do you have any questions or answers, or did I just just kill all the participants with this long presentation? <laughs> Um, we didn't have any questions come in uh, through the chat, but um, great presentation, Daria, and those are some excellent, you know, examples of of how you guys are using traditional um, life ways um, to address. I just love the I love the the ancestor wisdom in the modern paradigm. Like, love it. <laughs> 
So, okay, if this is it, then um, thank you for your attention. I will just leave the floor uh, to Dr. Jasna Fakim Baez for her uh, scientific commentary on cultural heritage and its sustainable development potentials. Jasna? Yes. Thank you, Daria. Just a minute, but... Okay. Uh, hello to everyone. Um, Daria already introduced me. Uh, so I work on various research topics related to the understanding of culture and culture practices in today's globalized and multicultural world. And one of my research topics focus on how to integrate culture heritage into sustainable development policies and above all how to promote different types of cooperation between the main actors responsible for planning implementing and evaluating development so how to work how to work with uh, people and on the one hand and how to work with policy uh, with politics on the other uh, as an ethnologist and cultural anthropologist, I try to develop and test different approaches or so-called soft methods for involving the local population in development uh, networks. Until recently, development strategies were designed for, for people and not together with people. Uh, so therefore, my central research question is how to design strategies or action plans or development strategies in which the voices of the local populations are heard and accepted. Uh, referring to my experience, experience in working on different development projects, we call them in Europe uh, applicable project with local authorities, municipalities, cultural associations, I can confirm that working with local people is not an easy process. We have to deal with different characters, personal interests, political views, educational backgrounds, different experiences. However, according to the participatory and inclusive approach or holistic approach as Daria presented, that are beca becoming increasingly important in the management of natural and cultural environment, the local population has become one of the main actors. A well-integrated, informed civil society can defend the natural and cultural environment against unwise political decisions. So the major challenge is therefore how experts or scientists or professionals, however we call them, can establish a good and mutual relationship with the local population. What is important, how trust can be built and how different responsibilities and tasks can be taken on in order to promote and implement sustainable development. So I work a lot how to build trust among different stakeholders. Uh, Daria presented very well how we can introduce practices related to cultural heritage into the objectives of sustainable development especially how we can use traditional knowledge, skills, values of the local population to fight against the climate changes that increasingly affect our lives. As we have seen, cultural heritage in new understandings refers not only to material uh, elements or material resources, be, like buildings, paintings, historical monuments, uh, castles, and so on, but also to intangible elements, such as traditional knowledge, skills, values, memories, the character of the place, customs, legends, and so on. At this point, I must highlight that during my research, I found out that locals generally do not understand that their life experiences, memories, or all knowledge are cultural heritage, and that their knowledge can provide important guidelines for sustainable living. They are aware of family or community traditions, but usually this is not local heritage for them. And we experts or professionals essentially refer to some tangible and tangible elements 
or resources as local heritage. So what I want to say that the we experts say that this is heritage, this is not, but people usually don't reflect on this, don't think about that. For this reason, we need to talk to people to raise awareness and show them that their life experiences and their knowledge are not something that symbolize backwardness or difficult life that it was in the past uh, in comparison to, with today, but an important uh, indicate, uh, indicators of how they can deal with the challenges of today's development. So their knowledge is important and we have to raise awareness of this. So the key question in using cultural heritage for development purposes is how to identify, how to find out which remains, which elements from the past have development potential for sustainable growth. How should we modify or improve them to meet today's needs, lifestyle and technological developments? It is important that we um, protect, that we safeguard local heritage or local elements from the past. But we have also to think about how, if it is possible, how to modify or how to um, prepare for the, today's needs. So the answer could be that the experts analyze which cultural resources from the past have positive values among the local population. Or in other words, what do the locals value and what do they not value? And what are the reasons, background, for a positive or negative evaluation? Because it can happen that a stone or a car, like, like um, what Daria presented, can, can have a negative uh, value among people. And it's, fine, and it's important to find out why. Usually, it depends on the current situation, political situation, development challenges, social circumstances, educational level, historical situations, and so on, which elements from the past are valued and appreciated by experts, locals, politicians, entrepreneurs. Um, so what is heritage? Heritage presents the treasure from the past, from uh, our predecessors, but it, inc uh, in it includes also contemporary values and social, economic and political context of the society also have influence what we will preserve from the past. So in theory, the concept of heritage is not something unchangeable, static, but is a dynamic and contested concept, a construct of our contemporary needs, concerns, experiences, value and desire. This is a, some, something, a definition, what is heritage, how to understand uh, in accordance with a new uh, theory. But what is important? Important are values and meanings that local people give to these uh, elements. Uh, this is also um, also UNESCO and different European um, institutions recognize this, how locals are important in this uh, process. So if some elements embody a positive value and, um, and is appreciated by expert locals politicians, it is, it is important to use for development purposes. If some elements are interpreted negatively, divide people or have a negative impact on the common view, it is not worth using them for development purposes. Maybe it needs a new generation that will appreciate this, uh, these cultural resources. For this reason, the local population should be actively involved in the process of inventoring, preserving, maintaining, promoting and passing on cultural heritage to younger generation. Moreover, this is important, working on the development potential of culture and, his, uh, and heritage require a long-term activities. It involves step-by-step -step actions that only after five or more years bring results. And usually when we work on this European project, we have only two or three years to, uh, to work with people. And this is not enough time to, to raise awareness and to show them how is their heritage important for the development. And this is a challenge. Many groups of stakeholders 
could be involved in cultural heritage practices. But here is the um, one way how to present. We, we are all the owner of the, of, the, of the heritage, but in general, we divided them into four main groups. So policymakers, experts or scientists, professionals, civil society or local people, and entrepreneurs. Why entrepreneurs? Because the municipalities in Slovenia and in many countries in uh, Europe don't have enough money to preserve or to develop cultural heritage, so we need another uh, money from the entrepreneurs. But this is a big problem, how to involve entrepreneurs in, in this process. Um, so integrative approach means According to the inclusive or integrative approach, which is a new concept in culture heritage theory, all these groups should work together. Integrative approach means that the bottom up and top down approaches are linked together, or that we take into account the needs of those in power and those affected by the decisions of the authorities and to avoid a hierarchical approach. This is crucial. The best way to achieve integrative approach in the field of cultural heritage is that the actors came from different sectors, for educational sectors, for environment, culture, welfare, from different levels of decision making, from municipality, region, provinces, state and transnational bodies, and with different statutes like public institutions, NGOs, private companies and so on. In theory, this is easy. But unfortunately, it is not so easy in practice, but some approaches for joint cooperation could be achieved. So this is a slide taken from another project, another uh, where we work on Alpine food heritage, but here I would, uh, it's very well presented how everything should work, how all stakeholders should work uh, together and responsibility of each uh, group of stakeholders. So at the end of this presentation, I would like to present some of my findings on how experts should work with local people to actively involve them in culture heritage projects aimed at using heritage for development purposes. First, the expert should conduct research and present the results to a wider public. The local population should be actively involved in the research. One of the successful methods methods of gathering for of getting information from people is to conduct interviews, uh, organize focus groups or other face-to-face -face meetings with different stakeholders from the community, with locals, community leaders, members of associ associations, primary school teacher, staff of tourist organization, mayors, and so on. Interviews not only provide the expert with important research data, but also help him or her to identify attitudes, wishes, ideas, problems, and experiences of those involved. So with interviews, the experts recognize the logic, uh, how we say, the, 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 what people think about heritage. In this way, the expert enter into the way of life of the community and can more easily find out what locals value in their local environment. The second, experts should organize different meetings with locals where, where participants have the opportunity to speak and express their feelings, ideas, opinions, expectations. The participant should feel accepted and their proposed idea should be discussed in the group. This could be achieved by using different participatory methods like word cafe that we will practice uh, later or problem tree, opera method. There are different me participatory methods where the voices of local people could be heard. It is important to enter into the dialogue with different stakeholders and to be a mediator among different groups of, of actors, especially between local politicians and local populations. Third, the expert should present good case studies from abroad to local people. 
the, in this way, local residents found out that they are not alone with their development problems and that residents from other communities have faced the same challenges and obstacles. And last but not least, experts should not be own all-knowing teacher. We don't know everything. Also, local population have some knowledge. We have to find a, a way how to link these both knowledges. The hierarchical approach is prohibited in participatory approaches. The expert should establish equal relationship between all actors involved. He or she should assume the role of mediator and build trust among local population. So this is um, all from my side. We have opportunity to work uh, to, to talk about this in the later when we will uh, in, we will divide it into groups. But now I give floor again to to Daria because uh, yeah. to Daria. I would just 